The Silver Expedition Compass. Hi, my name's Ben, I'm a UK based mountain leader and welcome to Summit and Beyond. Today we are looking at the Silver Expedition Compass. So I'm going to go through the features of the compass and as I go through the features I'm going to give you a brief example of what they do. This is the base plate, this thing here, and we're going to start at the top of the base plate. The marching arrow or the direction of travel arrow. That basically is if I'm walking towards you I'm pointing that arrow straight towards you and if I'm taking a bearing off the map then the, the, the arrow, this line here, you pop that black line on where you are and where you want to go um, in the direction of the, the direction that you want to travel so that arrow points in the direction you want to travel and then um, you take your bearing from there. If I have my bearing already and I am I'm ready to walk on it, uh, I'm following the direction of travel arrow or the marching arrow. Just above that is a luminous marker and that is just for when it's pitch black uh, we usually have a head torch, but if worst came to the worst, you could still use the compass in pitch black. You could do it um, very covertly if you really wanted to. On the sides, we have two rulers. We have one in inches and one in millimeters or centimeters. Uh, so metric and imperial. See, I, I think in metric. Then you've got a magnifying glass so that you can have a look a bit closer at the features. Next to that is this like little hole. Uh, that little hole is a stencil hole so use your magnifying glass to find the feature you want and then you might put the stencil hole on that feature and draw a little circle around that feature. Your bearing comes from the bezel. Uh, the bezel is this thing which turns and on the bezel there are um, degrees, so uh, 360 degrees. Inside the bezel there are some um, painted lines so that the painted lines actually turn as you turn the bezel uh, and in the middle of the painted lines is the orientation arrow. It's like a painted arrow with two luminous dots at either side of the, of, of the bottom of the arrow. Fixed inside the bezel, um, inside the plastic, is like a ring uh, and there's a, a, a luminous section here and then inside that there's a line that doesn't move. When we're moving the bezel, that line doesn't move. Now that's called the index line. The index line will show us the bearing that we're going to be walking on or the degree that we're going to be walking on. Um, it signifies the number. In the middle of the bezel there's a liquid filled capsule. So the bezel sort of um, moves the liquid filled capsule around and inside that liquid filled capsule is uh, the, the north arrow. Now it doesn't matter how much I turn this base plate around or the, the, or the bezel, the li liquid filled capsule, the, the compass needle always points to the north. It never moves, which is handy. <laughs> to take a bearing. Firstly you need to orientate the map, the top of the map is north and then you put your compass onto the map um, using the line, this uh, base plate line on the easting, on one of the eastings and um, so the, the direction of travel arrow is pointing straight up to the top of the map and then your compass needle will tell you where magnetic north is and then you just keep the compass on the map pointing to the north of the map and you turn the map around until the compass needle um, is pointing north so everything is aligned then you've got the compass needle pointing north you've got the direction of travel arrow pointing north to the north of the map that's the map orientated we would obviously find the feature that we're at or the position that we're at we would find the feature that we want to go to we would place the compass onto the map using the black line on the base plate we would place that black line from the feature we're at to the feature we want to go to and then we would turn the the bezel around until the the um, compass needle fits inside the orientation arrow and then we have our bearing we have the, the index line will signify the degree of our bearing and then all we have to do is keep that compass needle inside that orientation arrow 
and that means that if we now follow the direction of travel arrow or the marching arrow we are walking on that bearing you always want to place your map down on the floor never ever place your map on top of a trig point because it, the trig points are magnetic and they play around with the compass one of the craziest things that happens when i'm teaching navigation is nowadays there's like there's phones there's all sorts going on if i put the phone next to the compass uh, you will see the compass needle actually moves the other day i was out uh, teaching navigation and somebody had a, a magnet on their strap of their bag on the chest strap which uh, so every time they had the compass over their head every time they went like this to take a bearing the needle the compass needle shifted and um, so it's really important that you don't have cameras you don't have phones anywhere near the compass because it will mess with it the square um, scale one in 25,000 one in 50,000 and a one in 40,000 scale uh, basically if you say you're using the one in 25,000 map um, it makes it easy to find a six figure grid reference so you'd have your eastings, the number from your eastings, which is two numbers, your number from your northings, which is two numbers. And then um, you pop the, the corner of the square scale onto the feature that you want to go to within that grid square. And it gives you two more numbers. And then you have your six figure grid reference. If you want to learn more about how to take a six figure grid reference, just using the map, I'll link a video up here. Also, we can use this square scale to measure the distance so from the corner to the end it, it fits exactly the length of one square one to two is 200 meters so if i was going from this corner to this corner uh, i could pop my scale on one of the features and then pop it onto the second feature and I can see that it's about 950 meters. Um, if you're going around a corner like this, obviously it's hard to move this straight edge. You can use the lanyard to um, go around the corners because we can shape it. So I could, I could get the length of this whole trail using this lanyard. Uh, and then once I've got my once I've got my length of the amount of trail I want to run, then I can sort of go, well, it's going to be, I can put this on and go, well, it's going to be like however many kilometers. Uh, if you're planning on doing your mountain leader training and assessment and you're just wanting to get out navigating, I would recommend getting this compass. It's, it's not fancy by any means but it does the job it does all of the jobs that you need it to do forget to subscribe and go and watch either this video or this video other than that hit the thumbs up leave me a comment below and i'll see you in the next video in a bit <laughs>